Hi everybody, this is Dr. Sean Talbot, Chief Science Officer for Monavi, and welcome to another edition of From the Lab. You know, I'm just back from the ISSN conference, the International Society for Sport Nutrition Annual Scientific Conference, and I wanted to give you a recap for what I talked about there. This is one of the world's leading scientific conferences dedicated specifically to sport nutrition. And I want to give you a perspective for why Monavi, which isn't really a sport nutrition company, what are we doing at a sport nutrition conference? Well, what I was doing there was, first of all, networking with colleagues, second of all, getting ideas that we might be able to build into new products, but then also presenting two different scientific seminars. The first was a research seminar where what I was presenting on was a very novel new way of inducing relaxation and promoting restful sleep. This is something I don't want to give you too many details about because it's very early stage. It's something that could eventually become a Monavi product at some point. But what we found was this very novel natural extract can help people not just relax and have lower stress, but can also help them sleep better, sleep more soundly, sleep for longer minutes of the night. And that's a big, big problem in the world. You know, it, it, not necessarily insomnia, you know, a disease, but this idea of restlessness, not being able to fall asleep quickly, not being able to stay asleep, not having enough hours in bed so you, you, you drag yourself out of bed the next day because you didn't get that restfulness, that, that, that restorative quality that sleep is supposed to give you. What we found in people who use this extract was that they fell asleep faster, they stayed asleep longer, and of the time that they were asleep, they had more minutes in that most deep REM, or rapid eye movement sleep. That's the deepest stage of sleep, where you're dreaming, where your body is really repairing the damage that you caused to it through the whole beginning part of the day. So this is showing us that, that this could be a very novel, very effective way to help people sleep deeper and, and get that recuperative benefit from sleep that we're supposed to be getting. So that was one aspect of this conference. The reason we presented it at this sport nutrition conference is that that concept for athletes of being able to get as much re recuperation, as much recovery as possible during their sleep phase, that's very, very important for their performance. It's important for how hard they can train the next day. It's important for how their bodies will recover from the stress of training that they're putting, in a, putting, putting their body under. So getting sleep is as important in certain cases for an athlete as it is as, as their nutrition is or as their workout regimen is or, or, or any other aspect of their preparation. Uh, you probably realize how you feel differently on a day where you've gotten a bad night of sleep or a day where, where you know, the night before you've gotten a good night of sleep. You know, we're certainly not at our peak performance if we got a bad night of sleep. So this is something we're really excited about. And it's early stage. It's something we'll be, we'll be studying further, but, uh, but we're really excited about it here. The other part of the conference that, uh, that I was there for was to, to give a, an invited lecture. This was uh, a, an opportunity for me to talk about the link between nutrition and vigor, specifically for athletes. Now, you've heard me talk about vigor previously, about this idea of mental and physical performance, uh, uh, along the ideas of if we have vigor, we have motivation. If we have vigor, we have good mental energy and physical energy, and we just feel great and we want to go get things done. So this was a little bit of a twist on that. It was a, it was a twist to say, how does vigor apply to an athletic population? And the way it applies is that if an athlete has low vigor, low physical energy, low mental energy, their performance is absolutely going to suffer. You know, in, in, in some, of our, some of our preliminary studies, we show that athletes with low vigor might as well not even compete that next weekend. They might as well not even go to the starting line because they're going to have poor performance. On the other hand, if we can use vigor as a predictor for physical performance and a predictor for mental performance, we can track those athletes and show that as their vigor starts to come up with their training regimen, that they're peaking for their most important events. So that could be right before the Olympics, right before the World Championships, right before qualifying for a particular event. That's what I was talking about to these sport nutritionists and athletes and coaches. And what we found, what, you know, what I was able to, to, to explain to them is that there are a lot of ways to gauge vigor and to modulate vigor in our athletes. We can give them a 
poor diet. We can give them a, a fast food diet and a, you know, a lot of junk food and things like that. And we have those kinds of studies and we can show that vigor goes down. Importantly, we can show what changes before vigor goes down. We can show changes in biochemistry. We can show that if you're not eating a proper diet, your levels of oxidation in your body are higher. That's causing cellular damage. That's leading to problems that your body can't repair. That's sapping your vigor. We can look at if they're eating a poor diet, they're having fluctuations, wide fluctuations in their blood sugar levels. That is leading to them having changes in their appetite. So they're craving junk food, they're craving sweets, they're craving things that they shouldn't be eating, and they're also gaining weight. And that can be, can be transmitted into their, their body's expression of vigor. We can look at their stress levels and their sleep levels and that, how that transfers into vigor. And we can look at their overall energy and fatigue balance and how that translates in. So, the overall idea of my invited presentation was that nutrition impacts vigor and we can use that as a, as a sign or a signal for are these athletes on a good track or are these, are these athletes on a bad track. So it was, it, it was interesting because you know, this group, this ISSN, International Society for Sport Nutrition, is very attuned to the, to the physical performance of their athletes and the physical performance of their clients if they're, if they're trainers or, or if they're you know, community nutritionists. But bringing in the psychological aspect of that and showing how tightly linked they are, showing how physical performance and mental performance are so intimately married from an athletic perspective, I think impinges on what we're trying to do here at Montevi. We're trying to show people that nutrition, whether you're eating a proper diet, you're getting all those servings of fruits and vegetables that we need, are you getting your antioxidants, are you modulating your blood sugar levels, are you increasing your, your energy levels in an appropriate way and avoiding the crash, are you modulating your, your body's stress response, are you doing all of that kind of stuff with your diet and your lifestyle and your supplements, well, if you are, then your vigor will be at the highest that it can be. Your performance will be high. Your motivation will be high. So we can learn from what those athletes are doing. We can use those elite level athletes as a, as a, as a, as a laboratory almost, as a learning environment at that very highest level. And what they learn, we can apply across the board around the world. We can apply it to our lives as business people. We can apply it to our lives as moms and dads and, and members of our community and members of our churches and members of, of our families. We can, we, can, we can use that motivation, that vigor, that increase in energy, that increase in feeling good and feeling better, and we can do something with it. Think about if you felt better, what would you do with it? Would you build a, big, build a bigger business? Would you start a new business? Would you have energy left over at the end of the day to enjoy your family? Would you uh, vol volunteer in your community or volunteer with your church? What would you do if you felt better? You'd do something with that. You'd have the energy to do something. So that, that whether you're an athlete, whether you're a, a busy mom, whether you're an overworked dad, whether you're someone who just you know, is at the end of the day and you just go, oh, I'm done. That's a signal of low vigor. That's a signal of your body not being in the very balanced state where you're at the peak of your game. So whether you're an athlete or whether you're, you're a non-athlete, you're just trying to get through your day, this applies across the board. So that's the idea that I was trying to get across at this, at this ISSN conference. Um, my talk is actually posted up, uh, you can listen to the audio of my talk on my website, my blog site, which is just my name, seantalbot.com. Uh, the slides are there as well, and we'll, we'll try to make those available on the Montevideo blog so you can listen to it there uh, at the same time. But where, 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 does all this, where does all this take us, right? I said, I said at the beginning, Monavi isn't really a sport nutrition company. Uh, we have products that, that fill the antioxidant piece. We have products that fill the, the blood sugar modulation and the weight control piece. We have products that fill the, the anti-fatigue piece. And very soon, you'll be seeing that we have products that fill that stress modulation piece to help you relax and, 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 and have, a, have an appropriate stress response and be able to get that restful sleep that we so often need at the end of a stressful day. So you'll see those kinds of things coming and you'll hear me talking about those uh, in future editions of From the Lab. But I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about some of the, the athletes that we are sponsoring right now and that we are working with. 
Um, you'll hear me talk about them and talk with them in, uh, in future editions of From the Lab. But we've got, we've got three athletes that we're doing some very exciting things with right now. The first one is our very own Jeff Later. He's a Monavi employee, and we're happy to report that he was just, uh, just won the Mr. California bodybuilding uh, competition. Uh, you know, we were joking around with him around the office here that he was just looking more lean and more ripped and more just... Uh, I mean, let's just say it, amazing in so many ways that we started teasing him about, you know, hey, Jeff, you're wasting away. You know, don't you want some of these tater tots? Don't you want something to, you know, eat, eat? We're trying to, you know, tease him. And, and boy, he was on the right plan. But he used the Monavi products along the way. You know, it wasn't like he was drinking the juice and growing his muscles, but he was drinking the juice to balance his body in those certain ways, balance his oxidation so that his body could repair from all the stress that he was putting it under. He was using the Reveal products to modulate his blood sugar control and thus help him with appetite and help him with fat burning. He was using those products in very much a lifestyle format so that it would, it would help him feel better so he could have that energy to do something that he wanted to. He put that energy into becoming one of the top bodybuilders in the country. So look for Jeff to compete in the upcoming nationals that are happening in November this year. Uh, we're all crossing our fingers for him to, uh, to perform at his highest level. Another one of the athletes that we're sponsoring right now is a professional triathlete. His name is Derek Garcia, and you've already met him in one of our previous editions of From the Lab, where we were talking about the benefits of active and max and glucosamine that we have in our products to help these athletes recover and repair from the stress that they're putting their bodies under. Now, Derek has a really interesting story. He's gone through, young guy, young family, but he's gone through some very challenging health issues uh, recently. He's bounced back from those and he's been using Monavi products, not to make him run faster, just like Jeff isn't using Monavi products to build his muscles, Derek's using Monavi products in the same sort of a lifestyle fashion where it gives him that solid foundation that he can build his endurance training on. So the same way that Jeff later, as a bodybuilder, is using Monavi products as a foundation to build his resistance training on and build his muscle building on, Derek Garcia is using those Monavi products as a foundation on which to build his endurance uh, training. And he's one of the top triathletes in the, in the country right now. He's racing against all the top guys. He's performing at a very, very high level. Um, and he's doing it while he's building a Monavi business, while he's building a coaching business, while he's raising, uh, raising a young family. And, you know, that sounds like what a lot of us are going through every day. You know, Jeff Later is not a professional bodybuilder. He has a job right over here in our product development department. He helps us with innovation. He helps us with discovering new ingredients. He works all day long and has the stress of, of, of a bad boss who might be, you know, pounding on him to find something new and find some, some, some scientific substantiation behind that new ingredient. But then he also has to go and put additional stress on his body in terms of his, his training. The last athlete that we're sponsoring uh, is yours truly. Um, I've, I've been accepted into a competition called the CEO Endurance Challenge. And this is a competition where you have to have two criteria to get in. Uh, well, maybe, maybe three. The first one being silly enough to get into this competition in the first place. The, the, the other two real criteria are that you have to be a, a CXO level executive in a company that's at a certain level of sales. So Monavi is a certainly very successful company, fits into that category. Uh, because I'm chief science officer here, I'm allowed to you know, throw my name into the ring. So I've been accepted into it. And the thing that I love about it is that it's a group of people who have very busy, maybe stressful careers. You know, we, we're traveling around the world, we're trying to build products, we're trying to build markets, and then on top of that, we're trying to build ourselves. We're trying to, you know, use whatever energy we have left at the end of our stressful day to do our hobbies. You know, so my hobby is the, these endurance things. The competition is a three-day endurance challenge that encompasses uh, various cycling competitions, various running competitions, various swimming competitions, even some obstacle course competition kinds of things. And the thing that, that I, I'm excited about lots of aspects of it. I'm excited about interacting with these other uh, uh, C-level uh, executives. I'm excited about competing with them to see sort of where I stand. But I'm especially excited about the fact that we all play for a, a, for a designated charity. 
and the charity that I'm playing for is the Moore Project. So I'm training hard. If I can, if I can compete high enough where I get on the podium, one of the top three places, I'll be able to take part of the prize purse and designate that to be donated to the Moore Project. You know, I, I've already tried to do a lot of stuff with the Moore Project. I sponsor a couple of children there. Um, one of my books, uh, all the proceeds go to support some of the some of the Moore Project initiatives. Uh, so it's a it's a it's an initiative that monavi has been supporting since the beginning which which I've just uh, I've j has found a special place in my heart so uh, if you guys want to check out the CEO endurance challenge you can see the address at the bottom of the screen um, Facebook it, you know, give me a thumbs up, wish me luck, you know, all of that is going to help me dig deep and, uh, and hopefully come back with, uh, with some prize money for those kids. But I think what, 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 what I'm trying to get across to you here, and I hope it's coming through, is that Monavi products really can be the foundation for wherever you want to go. If you want to go and become Mr. California and maybe even beyond that, you can do that. If you want to use that motivation to become a professional triathlete at the top level, you can do that. If you want to go and compete against other CEOs uh, and CXOs for the ability to, to be able to give some of, this, some of this prize money to charity, you can do that. If you want to just feel better, if you want to just have some energy at the end of the day, if you want to have motivation to build your business, all of that is part and parcel of what these products can do for you. It's, you know, I call it vigor. You might just call it feeling good. It's, it's whatever label you want to put on it. But it's, I think it's what everybody wants. We all want to feel good. We all want to perform at our, our, our highest level. And I'll leave you with this thought before I move on to one other thing, which is what would you do if you felt better? Think about that for a second. If you took yourself from where you are right now, maybe you're in pain. Maybe you're fatigued. Maybe you're depressed. Maybe you're not where you want to be. Maybe you, feel, maybe you feel fine, but you could feel better. You could feel more energy. You could feel more motivation. You could feel like getting up and doing something. What would that be? Would it be a hobby? Would it be a business? Would it be a volunteer? What? what? It can be anything you want it to be. Think about that, and then think about how these Monavi products can help you get there. You know, we've been asking you to send in questions to us here at From the Lab, and we want to start getting to answering some of those questions. We're answering them on email, but we also want to answer them here on video so that other people can see the answer. Because if you have the question, there might be other people out there who have the same question. So now, today, since we're talking about the International Society for Sport Nutrition, and we're talking about athletes and how Monavi products, even though they're not sports products, so to speak, how they can benefit athletes, we do have a question that, that really falls into that athlete category. So let me read it to you. Dear Dr. Talbot, I'm working with clients in a gym and would like to tell them about the, about the approval of the Reveal products by the Olympic Committee. What specifically am I able to say in regards to it? Thank you. Thanks, Donna, for sending this in. This is a question that we get from time to time. And it's, it's, a, it's, it's kind of confusing, but the Olympic Committee does not certify or approve or promote or endorse any specific products. It's just not something that they do. And so it would not be accurate to say that the Reveal products or any, any Monavi products are endorsed by the Olympic Committee, whether that's the United States Olympic Committee or the International Olympic Committee or anything like that. I think the confusion came up because I am part of an International Olympic Committee sport nutrition program. And so I work with elite level athletes. I've been a, a, an athlete at the United States Olympic Training Centers uh, plenty of times in the past. I was a cyclist at Lake Placid. I was a rower supported by the, by the U.S. Olympic Committee. Um, I've been an educator um, in Chula Vista, which is where the, where the runners go, where the, where the long distance and middle distance runners go. So I've, I've been in the Olympic movement for a long time. I've worked uh, during the 2002 Winter Olympic Games here in Salt Lake City. I worked with, uh, with the U.S. ski team and the U.S. snowboard team. So I've been in that world for a long time. So sometimes I'll talk about that. I'll talk about my experience at the Olympic training centers or as, a, as an Olympic level athlete uh, and working with the Olympic level, level athletes now. And so sometimes people get the idea that these products are de facto endorsed by those committees. One thing, though, that, that, that I think is important to understand is that some of the confusion could have come from the fact that right around the same time that we were reformulating the Reveal Shakes, 
I was also working on a meal replacement formula for the International Olympic Committee Sport Nutrition Program that I'm part of. And just so happens that my formula that I designed for that program is virtually identical to the formula that you see in the Reveal product. So I was talking uh, in, in one, one forum about that, about how they're so close. And if you go to any Olympic Committee around the world, whether it's in the UK or whether it's someplace else in Europe or whether it's, you know, whether it's in Australia or here in the United States, and those athletes ask about a meal replacement. What attributes should it have? How many grams of protein and how many grams of fat and fiber and carbohydrates and things like that? It'll virtually look identical to what the Reveal Nutrition Facts panel looks like. So, you know, when I'm trying to explain to, to, to people that how premium a product they have in front of them, that it's good enough for the highest level athletes in the world, that, that sort of gets morphed into endorsed by the IOC. And that's, that's, that's where we have to draw the line. We can certainly say that our products are appropriate for these high-level athletes, and that high-level athletes can use our products as a foundation on which to build their training regimens, as I've just explained to you in this, in this edition of From the Lab, but we have to stop short of any sort of official endorsement. So I hope that makes sense to everybody. So let me, let me wrap it up there and invite you to continue sending in those questions to us uh, at the address that you see at the bottom of your screen, and please join me next time on From the Lab. This is Dr. Sean Talbot. Thanks a lot.